Hello students. Let's continue with our uh, unit number three and lecture number seven. Now, last time we have discussed about the fourth phase of compiler. That was the intermediate code generation, and in that, already we have seen uh, what exactly is the intermediate code and different types of the intermediate code. And uh, one of the type that is a three address code we have discussed in details. And also the representation of three address code also we have discussed in details. Okay. So today we are going to discuss about the next phase of uh, compiler. That is a code optimization techniques. Okay. Now, as all of you are very much uh, familiar with this uh, uh, diagram, that this is our uh, front end of compiler. Okay. So front end generated the output as here uh, intermediate code, and this is the back end of our compiler. So in the back end, two important phases we have to discuss: the machine independent code optimization and the code generator. So in today's lecture, we will discuss about the machine independent code optimization. So this figure already you know, in, uh, you are very much aware that uh, the compiler is nothing but the uh, process of compilation is being done by the compiler, which is nothing but consist of the various sequence of phases. And phases also, you know, the uh, different stages in processing of particular source program into the machine program. And here in this figure also, you can see each phase take the input from its previous stage and give that as an output to the next phase of compiler. So likewise, these already we have seen number of times, lexical and generated token give it syntax analyzer, likewise, okay. And we have reached up to the uh, fourth phase that is the intermediate code generation. And intermediate code generation also last time we have discussed, we generate the intermediate code in the form of the three address code and give it to the next phase of compiler that is the code optimization, which we are going to discuss. So in the previous lecture, we have discussed about the, what is the, exactly is the intermediate code and uh, why it is required and uh, different types of generating the intermediate code. Now in the types of the intermediate code, we have uh, discussed the three address code as a main type of the intermediate code. And also we have discussed regarding the different ways of representation of three address code. So why that particular code is considered as a three address code because it consists of the three main field. It, it is uh, consists of the only at most three operands and uh, operator that is the reason as it is considered of the at most three operands that is the reason it is considered as a three address code now it's the representation types we have discussed like code REPL, triple and the indirect so the code REPL consists of the four main fields and code REPL also one of the way of uh, representing the three address code in another form and code REPL consider the four field like the operator to operands and the result field. So in the code REPL, we are making the utilization of temporary variables to store the result. Okay. Then we have seen the triple. Now in case of the triple, the what was the drawback of uh, code REPL that is being awarded? Like in the code REPL, we have make utilization of multiple temporary variables. So in the triple, we avoid the utilization of temporary variables. And instead of that, we make the utilization of uh, reference to that temporary variable okay reference in the form of the position number and uh, in the indirect triple also we make some more changes in the representation of three address code like uh, instead of referring to the uh, particular uh, uh, result by the position numbers we make the utilization of one extra data structure as an array list and that array list we uh, make the utilization of pointers that pointers will point to the different position reference. Okay, so pointer is quite faster as compared to the rest of the uh, things. That is the reason in order to access the, that different uh, result, the particular, what you can say, the indirect triple is considered as the most beneficial and it is mostly utilized. Okay, and now up till <clears throat> we have reached to the uh, this part. Okay, and uh, today onwards, we'll focus on the back end of the compiler. That is nothing but our uh, first in that back end of compiler, we discuss about the machine independent code optimization and then we'll discuss about the code generation. Okay, so code optimization can be done at the two levels. 
uh, one level is nothing but the code optimization can be done before the code generation okay before the code generation in the sense before the machine code will get generated okay and another kind of uh, uh, optimization can also be done that is after the code generation that is called as a machine dependent code optimization now why this is being referred here as a machine independent code optimization and here machine dependent code optimization so there is a simple reason behind that while we optimize this code before the code generation then that time we don't have to think about anything about the uh, configuration of machine structure of the machine and uh, instruction set of the machine kind of register being utilized for the machine etc okay because this is the code being generated only on the basis of intermediate code generator only on the basis of intermediate code generator okay and that is the reason there is a nothing to be do with the uh, uh, machine that is the reason here the machine independent code optimization is being referred here now here if required the code optimization can be performed after the code generation and when the code optimization get performed after the code generation code generation that time there is a lot of thing has to be consider uh, related with the machine like uh, what kind of machine is that uh, means uh, its configuration 32 bit 64 bit kind of things uh, instruction set utilized for that particular machine register because code generation totally depends on the that particular uh, respective machine and its uh, kind of instruction set register being available for that machine and that is the reason this is a code which is generated after the Gener uh, the optimization which is done uh, after the code generation that is called as a machine dependent optimization okay so mostly these are uh, two things being get done in the back end that is the machine independent code optimization and second thing that is get done is the code generation so let's see the fifth phase of compiler that is nothing but our much uh, code optimization that is the independent machine independent code optimization so every time in the just like we are discussing the phases every time we are just making the changes in the particular uh, uh, these diagrams like we are started from the lexical analysis to the syntax analysis or parser to the semantic analyzer and intermediate code generation and now here here this is the uh, uh, thing we have to discuss today that is the machine independent code optimization as you can easily see here machine independent code optimization uh, receive the input from the previous phase that is the intermediate code generator and intermediate code generator uh, send this particular ic to the code optimizer okay and then in the code optimizer if it is required the code optimization get performed okay now what exactly is the uh, code optimization what are its techniques with example that all the things we are going to discuss here just you have to keep in mind the code optimizer take the input from the previous phase that is the intermediate code generator and that input is considered as a intermediate code okay now what exactly happened in the machine independent code optimization phase now whatever the intermediate code is being generated okay whatever the intermediate code is being generated only some changes are being done in that intermediate code and that changes are being done without any uh that changes has to be done without affecting the final result means what if you have written the program for to do the addition of 2 plus 3 and its result is coming as a 5 okay this is being done up to the intermediate code generation and when that that program is given as a input to the machine independent code optimizer so code optimizer will do the changes in this program if you have written for the 2 plus 3 and that changes should be uh, such a way that the result should come five only the result should not be get affected because of the changes been done in the code optimization phase then what kind of changes can be happen uh, in the code optimization phase so changes happen so that now changes happen only for the two important reasons first is how your code can be executed within a less amount of time means for the purpose of time efficiency to improve the time efficiency the changes can be done in the intermediate code okay that is the first reason why the code optimization is done for what purpose how your code can be executed within a less amount of time means time for the purpose of time efficiency and second reason for doing the code optimization is that 
how the space required for your code can be reduced means space efficiency purpose means what space efficiency purpose okay so for these two purpose the code optimization is done on the intermediate code okay now does it does the code optimization happens compulsory every time no it depends it depends on whether the code optimization is required there whether the code optimization can be done or no so that is the thing i have mentioned here in this phase that is the code optimization phase the compiler try to improve the intermediate code so that smaller and the faster running machine code can be derived means whatever the intermediate code has been received from the previous phase the code optimizer try to make the changes in that code now changes for what purpose so that your code can be get executed faster and that changes can be done without affecting the final result of your program if you are written the program to find out the even and odd numbers even after doing the code optimization that program should be able to do the that task of finding the even and odd numbers only be changes will be done in the form of how the speed of the program can be improved how the space required for the program can be reduced only for that purpose the code optimization is done okay so i have written here the code optimization is technique of producing the code that can be faster or take the less space or both so only reason behind doing the code optimization is that how your code can be more faster and how your program can take the less space okay so code optimization that will take place uh, before the final code generation okay that will not take into the account any machine properties like instruction set and the register that already i told you why this is called the machine independent code optimization because this code optimization is happening before the final code generation means before the machine code will generate still we have to see the machine code generation okay so before that if the code optimization is happening then it is called as a machine independent code optimization because it doesn't take uh, into the consideration while uh, doing the code optimization any machine properties like what are the instruction set of that machine what are the register are there etc etc it only consider the whatever the intermediate code generated and only on the basis of that it will generate it will do the code optimization okay so you can describe the code optimization in this way also code optimization is a technique where compiler can carry out the several transformation of a program at a intermediate level without changing its meaning means code optimization is a one particular technique where which is being performed by the compiler and what it does compiler do the different different or the several transformation or changes on your program which is intermediate code program and that changes being done without changing the final meaning of the program that is called as a code optimization okay so you can describe the code optimization in a different way like it is a technique where Uh, the the compiler make the uh, rearrangement of the code without affecting the final meaning of the program or without affecting the final output of the program so that is the task of code optimization okay now here you can see here i have shown the code optimization now code optimization will generate the optimized code and that will be given as a input to the next phase of compiler so that will be the la our last phase that is the code generation okay that will see in the next lecture now so you understand i hope you understood what exactly mean by the code optimization so code optimization or rearrangement of the code can be uh, done in the following ways or uh, there are the different ways of doing the code optimization okay we are going to see the techniques of code optimization also so here i have mentioned the code optimization is achieved in following ways now how the code optimization can be achieved and what are the techniques to achieve the code optimization that we'll see next but here just see which are the different ways of uh, achieving the code optimization one of the important way is what elimination of redundancy what elimination of redundancy or removing the redundancy from your code now redundancy means what i hope all of you know redundancy means the repetition of same same information within a program or repetition of same code within your program understood so that is called as a redundancy the code which is available in the program uh, which is uh, even if it is even if it would have not been available then also our program will work well that particular thing is called as a redundant redundant code or you can simply consider elimination of redundant code redundant code in the sense what some repeated code which is not required in the program 
okay so here i have mentioned redundancy means repetition of same meaningful words words in the sense code in your program or in the in the particular program instruction so that is considered as a uh, one of the way that is the elimination of redundancy removing the uh, unwanted code from your program or redundant code or repeated code from your program second important way is computation in a program are rearranged or rewritten to make it run faster means we can rearrange the code or we can make some modification in the code in such a way that that program will run faster without affecting the final output of the program so in this different way two important ways uh, the code optimization can achieve one is nothing but what now we are going to apply the code optimization on the intermediate code so in the intermediate code you have to see is there any redundancy in your intermediate code is there something code is present in your uh, intermediate code uh, which is considered as a repeated code or a redundant code understood also in the intermediate code you have to see can you do some changes in that intermediate code so that your program can run faster understood so this thing has to be observed in your intermediate code and then uh, the code optimization has to be performed okay now every in the each phase we have discussed this uh, example okay now for this example we have received the uh, uh, we have received the output from the fourth phase of compiler that in the fourth phase is our intermediate code generation and from the intermediate code generation we have received this output we have received this output for this expression okay from which phase fourth phase of compiler now this is your intermediate code for this expression now how the code optimization can be performed on this particular fragment of code so this is here i have written this is the unoptimized intermediate code means which can be optimized means something which is pro present in this fragment of code which can be get changed without affecting the final output of the program or some redundant code might be present in this program okay let's see now uh, you can see and for this unoptimized intermediate code this is the optimized intermediate code okay for this unoptimized intermediate code this is the optimized intermediate code okay now why we are calling this unoptimized intermediate code and why we are calling this as a optimized intermediate code let's see now in this program if you see this first uh, intermediate code instruction okay that is t1 equal to into float 50 okay means this instruction is doing what converting the 50 into the 50.0 but this conversion of 50 of 50.0 already done in the third phase of compiler okay this conversion of 50 into the 50.0 already done in the third phase of compiler that is our semantic analyzer okay if you see that lecture you can see there the conversion of 50 of 50 conversion of 50 into the 50.0 is done is already being done in the third phase of compiler that is the semantic analyzer so still the in the intermediate code also we are writing the instruction to do that so there is a no need of this instruction in the intermediate code understood and that is the reason this instruction or this code is considered as a redundant code which code this first instruction code understood so this can be eliminated understood the same thing i have mentioned here in an optimized intermediate code there is a no need to write the expression t1 equal to into float 50 sorry t1 in t1 equal to into float 50 because 50 as a integer is already converted into the float during the semantic analysis phase of compiler okay so that repeated operation get avoided or remove in code optimization and we can get the improvement in the previous code so that from this all discussion we remove this intermediate code instruction okay and directly we will write t1 equal to id3 into 50.0 now what is the id3 id3 is nothing but your b id3 is nothing but what your b and that is the reason here you get the this first uh, optimized ic as a t1 equal to id3 into 50.0 because this 50 of conversion of 50 into the 50.0 already done that is the reason we write here t1 equal to id3 into 50.0 the same instruction you can also write in this way t1 equal to b into 50.0 that is also correct no problem okay now then what is the next now because of these things we have done because of this instruction we have written already we have got the intermediate code for this whole things understood 
so now we also avoid to write this two instruction also how let's see so we can from this we can directly write id1 equal to id2 plus t1 what id1 equal to id2 plus t1 you can write this instruction directly like this also like x is equal to a plus t1 also meaning is same means for this three instruction for this three instruction okay for this uh, sorry this uh, let me tell you for this two instruction you write only one instruction here that is correct t1 equal to id3 into 50 so meaning of these two instruction is like this one thing understood and for this two instruction we can write only the single instruction id1 equal to id2 plus t1 and its meaning is same like this two instruction one understood so we have converted these four intermediate code instruction into the two instruction only means what is get save here definitely the space get save and if the space gets only the now processing of the this two instruction has to be done instead of four instruction so time require for time requirement for the processing and the execution will also be get save so space efficiency improve time efficiency improve and that is nothing but the concept as a concept of code optimization that is what making the changes within a original code by making some changes or by eliminating the redundancy from the code or by re by doing the rearrangement in the code whatever code we get that code is called as a optimized intermediate code understood if you see the meaning of this particular fragment of code and meaning of this fragment of code is exactly same only this three address code we have converted into some another form but this bus three address code is better as compared with this in the form of space efficiency and in the form of the time efficiency the meaning of both of is same understood so that is the concept of code optimization making the changes within a program without affecting the final meaning of the program that is called as a code optimization okay that is called as or the code optimization okay now there are the different ways of doing the code optimization on which the question usually asks there are the different code optimization techniques are available so our next point is nothing but the discussion regarding the different phases of the code optimization or sorry different techniques of the code optimization okay so here i have mentioned a compiler can carry out the several transformation of a program several transformation in the sense compiler can do the dev, uh, several changes in the program at intermediate code level means the compiler can perform the changes in the intermediate code without changing its meaning okay without changing its meaning i will not to do that these are the different techniques are available okay you know to do that these are the different techniques are available okay and in detail we will discuss about this technique with example like we have the uh, uh, first technique compile time evaluation which again consists of the two technique constant folding and the constant propagation then we have the dead code elimination code movement strength reduction and the common sub expression elimination these are the important techniques in case of the code optimization okay so let's see the techniques in that first technique compile time evaluation now what is the meaning of compile time evaluation or the its meaning is straight forward that whatever the computation or evaluation uh, ca that can be done at the compile time only that has to be done at the compile time only and that is being done by the compiler itself without uh, uh, doing that evaluation at the run time if there is a some code present in your program which code can be computed at the compilation time only doing that particular comp computation that is called as a compile time evaluation without without putting the extra burden during the run time okay so in that first technique we have the constant folding okay what is the that is the constant folding now instead of discussing this theory part we will directly discuss the example then we will come to that theory part for example in your program you have written this instruction that instruction is what circumference of circle equal to 22 by 7 into the diameter okay now in this instruction can we do the compile time evaluation is it possible to do the compile time evaluation of this instruction 
now this instruction will be get executed when when we will run that but during the compile time only also is it is it uh, is it uh, possible to do the evaluation yes you can do the evaluation of this particular uh, code like you can do the evaluation of this particular thing 22 by 7 there is a no need to do the processing of this 22 by 7 at the run time it is possible to do the computation of this during the compile time only understood so that is called as a constant holding understood so this is the constant term 22 by 7 understood its result will be 3.14 so doing the computation of this kind of things at the compute at the compile time only that is called as a constant holding and that is also being referred as a compile time evaluation here same thing i have mentioned as the name suggests it involves holding the constant means evaluating the constant during the compile time only the expression that contain the operands having the constant value at the compile time are evaluated means if in your expression there are the certain operand having the constant values then that get evaluated at the compile time okay those expression are then replaced with their respective results understood and now whatever the result of this evaluation that is the third result will be the 3.14 so instead of 22 by 7 here 3.14 will be get replaced what 3.14 so no need to do the computation at the run time for this because this computation is already being happening at the compile time and that is the reason it is called as a constant holding and that is being referred as a compile time evaluation so this technique evaluate the expression 22 by 7 at compile time this expression then replace with its result that is the 3.14 now what it save this save the time at the running run time okay what it save this save the time at the run time because in the run time it might happen this 22 by 7 maybe you need to you compute it 10 times understood it depends on your program in your program it you may need it to compute it 10 times but once it is being computed at the compile time and replace it with the 3.14 there is a no need to compute this 22 by 7 10 times during the run time and if it is no re not required then definitely the run time will be get save your program will be get executed faster and that is this is nothing but the code as what one of the technique of code optimization you are making your code to run more faster as compared with your previous code without affecting the final meaning of the program and this is the first technique in that that is under the category of compile time evaluation and that is called as what the constant folding okay i hope all of you are understood this then under the compile time evaluation we have the second technique that is the constant propagation what constant propagation okay now let's see the example then we put the theory now what is the constant propagation c consider this is the fragment of code in your program you have written the one variable equal to that is a pi equal to 3.14 you have one variable you have declared with the radius equal to 10 and below some here you have written the formula area of circle equal to pi into radius into radius now is it possible to do the evaluation of this particular terms at the compile time only is it possible yes because you know the value of pi you know the value of radius so you can it is it is directly possible to evaluate this uh, evaluate these terms as a result 314 understood now if it is being get evaluated at the compile time only then during the run time there is a no need to evaluate this again and again understood so same thing i have mentioned here and this is called as a constant propagation means you are propagating this constant you are using this constant in this formula here only and you are doing the evaluation during the compile time only. so same thing i have mentioned if some variable has been assigned a constant value then it replace that variable with its constant value in the further program during the compilation so the condition now if there is a some variable yes there is a variable yes there is a pi variable variable radius having the constant value so you can replace this variable in this formula with this constant values now one one uh, important condition is there for the constant propagation now value of the pi will never going to be changed but this variable you have mentioned radius equal to 10 now suppose this is being evaluated here as a 314 but somewhere in the program if the radius again you declare the radius with the another value that will be suppose 15 then at that time this propagation of 10 will not happen in the next formula 
if this formula is also utilized somewhere in next part of the program so that time this 10 will not be utilized but 15 will be utilized understood if this that is the reason I, here i have mentioned the condition for the constant propagation condition is what the condition is that the value of variable must not get changed must not get alter in between in between in the sense suppose you have written this formula of area of circle at the now here you have declared the pi 3.14 here we have declared the radius equal to 10 and here you have declared here you have written the formula area of circle equal to pi uh, uh, into r into r okay now here you are this uh, 3.14 and this uh, value of uh, uh, radius will be get utilized understood but now see in the next part of program again uh, you declare the radius as a 11 and in now this is this is your formula present at the line number 10 for example and again you have written the formula at the line number 15 to calculate the area of circle understood now here constant propagation will not happen here related with the radius now because here after declaring this as a uh, 10 again you have declared it as a 11 so 11 will be get utilized not the not the 10 here understood so when the constant propagation can get success only when the value of variable should not get changed throughout the program means value of the radius should not get changed throughout the program that time only you can replace this variable with this radius and that time the constant propagation will consider as a successful this was that is the same thing i have mentioned so if this thing is being satisfied then constant propagation as a part of the compile time evaluation can be performed so constant propagation is nothing but what if there is some variable has been assigned some constant value then replacing that variable with its constant value in the further program during the compilation that is called as a constant propagation so this technique substitute the value of variable pi and the radius at the compile time only instead of run time and it then evaluate the expression like this 3.14 as a into 10 into 10 and the expression is then replaced with the result 314 so this expression will be replaced with the uh, value 314 so this is this is also saving the time at the run time so if this computation is done if the condition is satisfied then this computation can be done at the compile time only and if this is being done at the compile time no need to put the extra effort no need to do the processing of these things when during the run time understood so this is also making our program faster because of the constant propagation and that is called as a compile time evaluation so compile time evaluation is the most important technique we usually compiler uh, does this kind of code optimization on our program understood so that is the first technique of code optimization that is a compile time evaluation we are we make the changes in the program or we make the evaluation uh, of the program that is the intermediate code and uh, without doing that at the run time if it is possible now when it, if it, when it can be possible it can be possible if the const constant folding can be done and it can be possible if the constant propagation can be done okay now let's see the next important technique in the code optimization that is the common sub expression elements okay now first in order to understand what exactly mean by the common sub expression elimination okay now let's understand what do you mean by the common sub expression first the expression that has been already computed before and appears again in the code for computation that is called as a common sub expression so that is also considered as the redundant code also or redundant expression also what the expression that has already been computed before and appear again in the next part of the code and appear again in the code for computation that is called as a called as a common sub expression or that is called as a redundant expression now let's see the that in this example now here you are written s1 equal to 4 into i s2 equal to consider this is your part of your program s2 equal to a of s1 s3 equal to 4 into j s4 equal to 4 into i now this is the common sub expression or this is the common sub expression or redundant expression because see the definition the expression that has already been computed before s4 equal to 4 into i already computed here and appear again in the code for computation now this is appear again in the code for computation that is the reason this is called as a common sub expression or the redundant expression so elimination of such kind of expression from your intermediate code that is called as a code optimization technique as a common sub expression elimination and this is the most popular and the 
famous uh, code optimization technique applied by the code optimizer in the compiler okay so as the name suggests it involves the eliminate elimination of the common sub expressions like here i have shown you the redundant expression are eliminated to avoid their recomputation this is already being computed why there is a need why the computation need to be done again so doing the computation again is not making any sense only it is which will consume the space and the time understood so removing such kind of thing from your code that is called as a common sub expression elimination as a code optimization technique okay so the already computed result is used in the further program whenever required so whenever you require these things now here you can see here you are requiring the s4 okay now instead of using the s4 here you can utilize the s1 because the result of s4 and the s1 is same so this kind of changes when we do in this original code then we get the optimized code so this is your code before the optimization and this is the code after the optimization now what changes we have done let's see so this is we have written as it is okay then s2 equal to a of s1 s2 equal to a of s1 this is also as it is we can write then s3 equal to 4 into j that is also we can write as it is and s4 equal to s s4 equal to 4 into i now this is the written there is no need to read, uh, write it again so this is being eliminated here and directly we have written s5 equal to n and s6 equal to b of s1 plus s s b of sorry s6 equal to b of s1 plus s5 now instead of s4 because we have eliminated this you cannot write s4 again here so instead of that you write s1 understood instead of that compiler will do what instead of compiler will uh, instead of writing this s4 s1 equal to 4 into i to, and s4 equal to, uh, s1 equal to 4 into i and s4 equal to 4 into i two times compiler will simply write it once okay and here instead of using the s4 compiler will replace it with the s1 so your meaning of the program will remain same the output will remain same only you are doing some kind of rearrangement within a code without affecting the final meaning of the code but this rearrangement reducing your program so here are how many instruction 1 2 3 4 5 6 here are only the five here are the six instruction here are the five so space get save time get save and this is nothing but the consider as one of the major improvement within a code as a part of the code optimization okay i hope all of you have got this now next code optimization technique is called as a code movement now what exactly this now we'll go to the theory after discussing the uh, example first now this is the code before the optimization and this is the code after the optimization what is the code you have written let's see for where for loop you have taken int j of 0 j is less than n j plus plus and within a loop what you have written x equal to y plus z a of j equal to 6 into j now how many times this code will run for example consider to me uh, n value value declare ke liye 10 consider you have declare the n equal to 10 somewhere so this loop will run 10 times understood but you can see is there any operation happening on this x equal to y into z is the value of y into z is getting changed here within this loop no even this code will run 10 times value of this x will will be the remain same that is the y plus z but this will going to be processed 10 times yes or no but is there any uh, sense processing this 10 times if there is a no change happening in the value of uh, this uh, x equal to y plus z no here there is a no need to execute this 10 times or there is a no need to process this instruction 10 times so can you write it in the another way still the meaning of this for loop will remain same let's see yes if you write it like this x is equal to y plus z and remaining part as it is still the meaning of this two fragment of code is same only here in case of this this will be going to be processed 10 times here it will not be going to be processed 10 times only one time and still it is having the same meaning understood so that is called as a code movement code optimization so you are doing the code optimization as a code movement because it, it can be done if if you move this x is equal to y plus z before this loop then it is not going to affect on the final output of the code understood why it is not going to affect because here you are not here you are not changing the any value of uh, y z or x it is remaining same understood so if you move this out of the loop 
then your processing time will be get reduced and if your processing time will get reduced that is considered as a efficiency improvement in the form of time understood so moving the code out of a loop that is considered as a code movement technique without affecting the final output okay so same thing i have mentioned as the name suggests it involves the movement of the code the code present inside the loop is move out of it the code present inside the loop is move out if it does not matter whether it is present inside or the outside so it doesn't matter here x is equal to y plus z whether it is a present inside or present outside it doesn't matter but if it is present inside then it is a wastage of time so why should not why why should not we should write it outside loop so compile do it and write it outside loop or such kind of changes can be happen from the programmer itself okay so such a code unnecessarily get execute again and again so if you put this within a loop this code will get execute again and again with each iteration of the loop so this lead to the wastage of time at a run time and that is the reason movement of this can be done outside the loop this code optimization technique is referred as a code movements understood so that is the also one important technique that is considered as a code optimization under the uh, using the code movement so sometimes it can be happen from the programmer itself so compiler will do the optimization of this kind of code in this way okay by doing the movement of code fourth important technique is the dead code elimination this is also the important uh, optimization now optimization has to be done from the compiler because of some of the mistake that might be happen from the programmer in the rearrangement of the code okay so let's see the example first and then we'll see the theory so this is the code before the optimization what is the code i equal to 0 if i equal to 1 uh, here assignment of i to the 0 uh, to the i then here if i equal to 1 then do this operation what operation a equal, a equal to x plus 5 okay now you can see this 1 2 3 4 5 6 uh, five lines of code is reduced to the one line of code one why because in this code this is the this code is considered as a dead code what this code is considered as a dead code why because what is the condition return if i equal if i equal to 1 now i is never going to be equal to 1 because here is i is initialized to 0 understood so this part we are no, never going to be execute understood but it is it is it is consuming the space within a program yes or no it is consuming the space within a program so can it be eliminated yes without affecting the final out of the program yes it can be eliminated and that is the reason this code is considered as a dead code and that is being after getting elimination we get the code optimization like this only the i equal to 0 because because of this condition this whole part is not going to execute if it is not going to execute then it is considered as a dead code understood so same thing i have mentioned as the name suggests it involves eliminating the dead code the statement of the code which either never execute or unreachable or their output is never used are eliminated so which code we can call the dead code the code which is never going to be execute or the the code which is unreachable that code is considered as a dead code and when the compiler apply the dead code elimination then that is considered as a one of the core optimization technique so this is the fourth technique that is the dead code elimination and let's see the last one that is the strength reduction technique okay now as the name suggests it involves the reducing the strength of expression now first you need to understand what do you mean by the strength of expression now strength of expression depends on strength of the operator which is used in that expression means what plus operator is having the less strength as compared with the multiplication okay and subtraction is having the less strength as compared with the as compared with the division understood less strength more strength means what if in your program more strength operators are utilized then more processing time can be required if in your program less strength operator is being utilized then you require the then require the time required to process that code will be the less understood so if in the certain expression high strength operator are present it if it is possible to reduce, uh, replace it with the low strength operator 
then that is considered as a code optimization using the technique as a strength reduction so let's see this technique replace the expensive and costly operators now which are the expensive and the costly operators as compared with the plus and minus so as compared with the plus and minus star and division operators are the expensive and the costly operators so replacing the expensive and the costly operators with the less expensive and the less cost operator that is called as a strength reduction here i have written this is the technique which replaces the expensive and the costly operator with simple and the cheaper one means replacing the plus with the star uh, sorry replacing the uh, yes replacing the uh, replacing the plus operator on the place of star operator and replacing the subtractor operator at the place of the division operator let's see in the example so this is the consider code you have written in your program that is b equal to a into 2 so can we write it in the different way with the less strength operator yes it can be written like this b equal to a plus a so meaning of this and the meaning of this is the still the same only what you have done you have replaced the expensive and the costly operators with the less expensive and the less cost operator but the meaning is same so this is called as a strength reduction that is what replacing the expensive and the costly operator with less expensive and the less costly operator that is called as a code optimization without affecting the final meaning of the program so in this what you have done the expression a into 2 is replaced with the expression a plus a so this is because the cost of multiplication operator is higher than cost of addition operators and that is called as a strength reduction this can be done only if it is possible and it can be done by the compiler and this all the technique is considered as a code optimization technique so these techniques all the techniques with the example we have seen i hope all of you understood if you have any doubt you can comment uh, in the comment section i will definitely answer all your doubts thank you all